So good morning, all the participant and welcome on day four work uh, this uh, summer workshop. So today I'll I'll going to discuss a deep learning architecture for land cover classifications and also how we can implement for uh, land cover classification from the satellite data. But before going to the that coding part, let me I'll discuss some of the uh, important concept which is uh, necessary for everybody. So this is my outline. Uh, with the introduction followed by the list of architecture, deep learning architecture for the land cover classification from high resolution satellite images and then few data set for the land cover the classification task and lastly that uh, uh, hands on session on land cover classification from sentinel to satellite images so i hope this uh, this slides already you have seen uh, for what you call the deep learning architecture in a remote sensing application so today as a focus is here so like a classification task linet 5 and alexnet vg16 and then a VG19 event, ResNet, ResNet 50, ResNet 101, and DeskNet 101, Inception Res ResNet V2, etc., etc. And uh, then, of course, this part is not a part of the discussion. So this is same as the previous slides. So just I'll uh, going to be discuss the one architecture. I right? just summarize it. So this is a linear five architecture, right? Which I already told you in the first lecture that uh, it is a. So this five means here there are five beta layers, right? Which includes uh, two convolution layers and three fully connected layers. Three means here that uh, nothing that is a dense layer we call as. So total become a five here, right? So this was architecture uh, which was proposed by uh, Linet 5 by Ali Kuhn et al. in 1998 for the uh, handwritten digit recognition task, which already I had given the brief the description in my lecture in the first lecture. So uh, for implementation, if you want to implement, this is the model right here. So model is here as this is input image, right? And this is a here convolve feature map. So this is a uh, like say for kernel size is five plus five. His stride is one, right? And then if you do the convolution operation with a certain number of filter, uh, kernel filter with the size of this, you will get the feature is this one, right? So here, twenty eight cross twenty eight to six. That means at this stage we are using the kernel which is size is five cross five. This is five cross five kernel or filter. So we at this first layer, uh, we are we are using here the six such a filter, right? Six such filter we are using to perform conversion operation on this input image, which is having size 32 cross 32 into one. One is here that tells about the depth of the input image. But as here the input image, which is called uh, 0 to 9, the handwritten digit. So as a image, this is basically a grayscale gray image, right? So in grayscale image already, uh, you know, uh, that intensity value will be from 0 to 255, right? And the that will be displaying width into height. But as a channel, like say for the channel, this is say for depth or say for depth part, for grayscale image, it will not be displaying whenever you are reading image by any software, right? So before uh, giving to the grayscale image to the deep uh, neural network architecture or deep CNN, your first task is resave the data. Resave. So there is a np.resave command is your Python with the help of that you can receive from the from the two dimensional here into make it the three D tensor. So basically in general concept, I would say I'll give if 
you are uh, using a 2D scenery architecture, then the input image should be in the 4D tensor, 4D. 4D in the sense that that will be first number of samples, how many are there? Second, the width, then the height, and the fourth, that will be parameter called the depth of the input image. So here, this is for one image, right? 32 cross 32 into one. So width, height, and then that is the depth of the channel of the input image, right? So grayscale will, will not be there. So by manually, I mean by doing the reshaping uh, task, you need to you need to create, I mean, make it the uh, fourth dimension, right? Then already you know that uh, talked I study that uh, uh, told by uh, Dr. Jini Rajan sir, right? Already how you can compute the feature map, right? So this is a formula which already has been told. So here as padding is zero, so you can say for uh, input width W2, W1 minus uh, W2. So W1 means here, that is the width of the input image. W2 is the width of the filter, which is five here, plus twice P divided by S. Formula, I hope you remember, right? W1 minus W2 plus 2P divided by S plus one. This is a formula to calculate the uh, that width of the Conval feature map, right? So here 32 minus five plus zero because padding is zero here and divide stride is one here mentioned already. So plus one, so you'll get 28, right? Likewise, you can compute the that uh, height, height, height also you can compute that. Uh, that will become 28 right now. So this is the first layer. Likewise, once you do average pooling, average pooling as you know, the, 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 the way we are computing, same way we can compute the feature map, right? So like here 14 into 14 into six right now. So here as input is 28 minus two, because kernel we are using here, uh, F means filled, the kernel size is two, right? Two cross two and the stride is two here, right? So 28 minus two plus padding is zero. All base uh, in the pooling layer, any pooling layer, padding all base will be zero, right? Here padding may be used that to make the, the Conval feature map same as the input feature map, right? So 28 minus two plus zero divided by two, so you will get the 14, right? I hope it's clear to everybody. And the depth of the, after doing the pooling operation will be remain same as the, that previous depth, like in you know, Conval feature, because here we, we are not using such number of filter, right? So here, whatever the depth is there will be, depth will be remain same like here. You see the six number, right? Then again, using the conclusion operations. So in conclusion operations here, uh, using the 16 such filter, right? At this stage, uh, second conclusion layer, 16 such filter use uh, with the size of same five cross five, the stride is one, right? And then you can come padding is here zero. So you can compute as here, right? So 14 as input, right? Minus uh, uh, kernel size, which is a five plus zero divided by one. So plus one, you get the 10, right? So then here are the pooling operation again here. So pooling operation, you can say you can compute again here. Right after pooling, you will get the five, five cross five into 16 right now. So that will be same size. So this is, I hope, clear, right? 16 filter use, that's, that's why the depth of the, the Conval feature map becomes 16 here, right? 16 channels, right? 16 channel. So whatever the feature map coming that have a 16, one, two, three, four, like this, like a stacking one, two, three, like this, 16, the slices you understand like this way. And then all the again will be used as input for the next layer, pooling layer. And then you will get the this feature map. Uh, after that, using the that uh, three dense layer, which include the uh, as a fully connected layers, which is nothing that simple ANN the architecture, right? ANN layers, like the dense connected operation like uh, WX plus B, right? The function of this operation will happen at each layer here, right? And uh, then we will last be using the softmax. Softmax is used because we wanted to assign the number of 10 number of nodes because there are 10 digit 0 to 9. 
So we need to give here the 10 nodes, right? So then finally, the sort match give, give the uh, uh, this uh, probability for each classes. So that will give the probability P0 to P9, right? So like, and then after predicting the probability of R, that next task will be there using R max, right? R max, what it does, there are the 10 probability predicted by classes. Then see that out of 10, uh, each column, there will be 10 columns right now, column 10 columns. So each column represent the class digit, right? Class 0, 1 to 9, right? So in the in the column wise, right? I mean the predicted probability, see that which specific column that the probability is high. If the say, for example, that the third column, the probability is high. So third is what is the class? 0, 1, 2. So the predicted probability that belongs to the, that will be uh, class, two, I mean, 2, digit 2 here, right? So like that, you can, you, you can, that will be doing for all the uh, samples. I'll demonstrate right now, later on. Is that clear, guys? Participant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, any doubt? Anybody? No, sir. It is clear. OK. Right. So this is like once we implement it, right? This summary will come model summary right now. So model summary will give you the like here, the feature map. Feature map in you know, that is giving the depth, right? So input means depth is one, depth is six, depth is six, 16, 16, 120, right now, like that here, right? And here the size, like 32 cross 32, then 28, then 14. See that because we are not using any padding, right? zero padding right now. So that's why the dimension, right? Width and height of the convolved feature map, I keep on here reducing that right now. You can see that. That, that is going to be 5 cross 5, then we are using here 1 cross 1 convolution layers. And then finally, we are using that here, the 84 nodes. And last will be 10 nodes as a soft max to give the, uh, to predict the probability of the 10 classes 0 to 9, that right. Then uh, this is Alexnet architecture, which was introduced by Kresge et al. in 2012. This was already talked by, uh, told in the, my first class. So now I hope you can understand clearly, right? Just verify that right now. Each step you see. Input, if this is color image, here depth is three. Here the input image, like a bit and height already given. So each layer, you can just, just verify that, right? Verify that each layer here, uh, the feature map is coming correctly or not. So convolve, the kernel size is 11 cross 11, stride is four, Right, 96 such kernel used to perform the input image on this. Well, one more thing I would suggest at the first layer, how many number of filters we are going to decide? That is basically there is no rules, but number of filters is decided based on the what is the input size image we have. Suppose if input size image is uh, is very small, say for example 32, 32. There is no point of using the such, a, I mean, large number of filters kernel like 96 or say for 30, right? So depend on the input image, you can decide that the uh, that number of kernel. But normally the number of kernels gradually, I mean, it will be increasing layer by layer, right? If it is using here 96, so further layer you will see that the number of layer will be keep on increasing, right now. So 96 kernel. Guys, just take the pen and paper you have. I hope max pooling, you know, right? Pooling concept explained by study, right? Yes, I'm not explaining that's why, right? Once you're done, uh, just raise your hand. So that will understand that how many of you are able to do. Just at least here, up to here, right? Other participant, involve yourself. Don't become movie watcher.
रवि मैथ एम एस सी एस डिपार्टमेंट अमला मैरी अश्विनी आर पाटिल दीपा श्री डॉक्टर ममता डॉक्टर ममता ग्रीस आर यू देर आर सिंपली लॉग इन एंड डूइंग अदर वर्क डॉक्टर ममता ज्योति एस टी ज्योति मैडम यस सर सर एबल टू डू अंडरस्टैंड यस देन व्हाई डिट पुट योर रेज हैंड आई टोल्ड रेज योर हैंड राइट मीनू अनिल सत्य प्रकाश दो आर नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग एंड एज्यूम दैट दे आर नॉट हियर हेलो सर या मे आई आस्क अ डाउट हियर या टेल मी सर इन दर्टीन क्रॉस थर्टीन क्रॉस थ्री एटी फोर लेयर दो टू लेयर्स आउट देर एंड देर द पैडिंग इज टेकन टू बी वन बट इन द कैलक्युलेशन इट इज टेकन एज ए टू इन टू वन सो शेल वी अंडरस्टैंड आई मीन द पैडिंग इज टू और वन इट इज where where uh, uh, so in the bottom layer i mean uh, the the second row mm-hmm. the first two layers are 13 cross 13 cross 384 ha ah, here is a conclusion yes 2 into 1 right yes sir, but the padding is given as a 1 so i mean what is the formula this is formula na so it is yes sir 2 2 plus 2 right 2 into 1 yeah yeah okay okay Formula is this, madam, right? W one, yes, W two plus two P, right? Two P, two okay. into P. I mean, two into P, right? Now, nah. right, right. Two P means twice into P, multiply number of padding. Right. Okay. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, may I ask a doubt? Pardon? I have a doubt, sir. Yeah. So in the last after the last math school we are getting six by six and two fifty six which is coming to nine two one six. Hmm hmm. How it is coming, right? Yeah, that is correct, sir. But how it becomes four zero nine six when it goes to the fully connected layer? That is my doubt. Yeah yeah. I'll, I'll let you. I'll explain. You. That's why I I just not. I'm waiting right now. Okay. That's why I okay. told you complete up to here, right? Okay sir. Okay. Ah, uh, because there is a concept here, right? That's why I want to explain. Okay, sir. Okay. So people will log in and they'll they'll get away, right? This is a big problem, right? People are not honest about their work. Okay. Their problem. Fine. So the let me explain here, right? So up to here, up to here, right? Whatever you got. so this is a feature map okay after th- this is a last uh, last pulling operation right we got it here uh, the size is 6 cross 6 into 296 so next step is basically that uh, i hope whether you understand or not yesterday so cnn there are two parts right now one is called feature extractor second is a classification part right so up to here right now pooling layers whatever you have seen that is the feature extraction part and then after this all are basically the classification part okay so as we are using here called the fully connected layers okay so in fully connected layers all base the input should be a column vector right the input thus that uh, this is dense layer or say a fully connected layers always accept the data in the form of a column vectors right so how will do it so last output of max pooling 
which is a two cross two matrix, which is having basically here six into six into 256 right now. So what we'll do this, this data, which is a two dimensional matrix is it, it should be converted into a column vector. Right, so which coming basically here. Uh, nine to. Nine to one six. How it is coming? This much basically having the columns. Huh? I mean the rows. Right. So this much rows and into single column, right? So how do you like them? This operation we call as a flattening operation. Flattening layer or operations. Right. So how it is coming in 9216 is very simple. Whatever 6 into 6 into 256 do it, you will get this values, right? So now we got column vectors, right? So after that, we need to use the uh, nodes like here as using, right? This is the fully connected layers right now. So at this node, right, we are assigning the 4096. This, this is as a one number, right? You can take it maybe uh, what do you call 2048 or 1024. Right, you can up to your researches, but as the data size is basically this model was trained on uh, this uh, ImageNet data set. That is on ImageNet data set, so that is huge data set. So that's why you need to assign basically a large number of node at the this full, first fully connected layers. So here using 4096 node. So what happened? These all the back, the features. These are the features basically. Excel features nine one nine two one six is going to connected. Is going to connected with this four zero nine two six right now. Is it clear? All the features like nine two one six and each feature of this this much feature is connected with the four zero nine six node. Like this way. I hope it's clear to you guys. Since this is feature one right now, let's assume that. So this feature value is going to connect it all the nodes which are there here. That will be four zero nine five. This is say for zero node right now. Is it clear everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. The second feature is goes to input to all right now like this, like this. So once it is multiply here, definitely each case there will be bit associated, right? So start from W zero bit, right? It goes to W nine four zero nine five bit, right? So bit will be associated that, right? Each layers like this also will be it like this. I hope things clear to you guys, right? And then next layer also will same nodes using, right? And then last we are using the softmax with a one thousand nodes because the ImageNet data set having basically 1000 the classes 1000 classes objects are there i mean we can uh, we can find the we can uh, that predict the 1000 classes of the objects which includes in the in that image data set which contain 14 million images right now so that it is going to predict at p0 to p999 Right, so probability is probability P0 to P probability 999, 999. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Okay. And one more concept I'll, I'll give you here. Uh, say the where the, uh, there will be two things. So feature extraction will, what are the layer will be responsible of feature extraction? That convolution layers, right now, convolve layers and pooling layer. I am calling pooling layer in general form, right now. So these two layer are responsible for the feature extraction part and classification, which is nothing that is the fully dense. I mean, fully controlled layers will be responsible for the doing classification task. So this is nothing basically in and part, right? And uh, the, the parameter, one more thing's concept. 
So parameter, where will be parameter involved? Parameter will be at a convolution layers and pooling layers. OK, so here I, I mean this uh, the convolution layers, the parameter which. Uh, no, not the pooling layers. The parameters will be only associated with the uh, the convolution layers and then a dense layer here. So max pooling does not involve any much parameters here because we are not doing any number of I mean uh, the convolution operations. So the parameter at the convolution layers and dense layer you can easily compute that. How you will compute? I can explain you very simple way. So general concept is the parameter at each convolution layers, right? Will be equals to uh, that is general formula. I'll say f into f into so f cross f, right? Filter size into that is uh, number of filter sir class name sir class name urgent hai koi 310 ha ha So this is I'm told just link convolution layers, right? Parameter at convolved layers. So F into F into number of filter into depth of input image plus number of filter. I mean, this is actually that parameter due to, I would say, weight plus parameter due to bias. This part is parameter due to the, the weights associated with the convolution layers. Then the parameter due to the bias is nothing. How many number of filters we have used? This is very important formula. Keep in mind. OK, so for example, uh, let's consider if we want to, we have convolution layers. And at this convolution layers, we are using 96 as filter. And this is the input image, right? And this is the depth is here 3. So if you and the kernel size is here 11 cross 11, right? We are using. So what will be the number of parameter if you want to estimate with the pen and paper, right? So 11 into 11 plus 96. Guys, you need to open your calculator mobile. Into 3 plus 96. Just do the calculations and tell me. 11 into 11 into 96 into 3. That depth of input image. How many parameters is involved at the first column? Can you tell me? 34,944. 34944. This must be parameter involved uh, at a first layer, right? Is that clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Everyone able to verify? Concept clear? Yes, sir. With the pen and paper analysis? Parameter at convolution layers, specific convolution layer is equal to parameter due to base plus parameter due to bias. How calculate parameter due to the bits? This is a formula. F into F into number of filter into depth of the input image plus number of filter. This is the parameter due to the bias. Now, guys, you need to verify next uh, convolution layer here. This will be say, remain same at this layer. Let's verify. So here, kernel size is 3 cross 3. Number of filter is 256. Now, for this case, what is the depth for the input? Th this is the input feature right now. 27 into 7, 96. So for this layer, the depth of the previous input is 96. Plus parameter due to bias. 
256. Just verify. Tell me, add it. Two, two, the kernel one, size three by three or five by five? Ah, oh, sorry. Yes, yes, five by five. Six lakh fourteen thousand six fifty six. Is it is that clear, everybody? Sir, I had one doubt. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Sir, when you flatten a 2D image, uh, then uh, will you lose the spatial ordering in case of a satellite image? When you flatten a 2D image, will the spatial order and relationship of the image be destroyed? No, I don't think so. There will not be there any problem flattening operation. Flattening operation basically what happened, it will not be random actually, right? I'll explain you how to happen. Very simple example. It is you have four cross four matrix, right? Yes, sir. OK, so this matrix. Uh, Sorry. Okay. So what happened? This is channel one, right? Now first channel. So this channel going to be arranged like this. This is first row. You have to put here first row. The value will be coming here. Okay. Second row, you will be here, right? Third yes, row, sir. like so. Order of the channel will be remain sequencing only, right? Now this fourth row, right? Then the second depth, second channel is there, now. Same bit will be arranging that. So if you wanted to convert back to the matrix, the same way you can make it converted to the matrix. Same order will be remain same. Oh, order okay. will not be changed. Is yes, it clear sir. to you? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so parameter, uh, for example, if you're looking that uh, this clear, right? Convolution layer, how to calculate parameter with pen and paper, right? And if you want to calculate pen and paper parameter with that uh, at a dense layer, very simple here. So this you multiply with this, right? That will be total number of layer layer. Plus, you have to add the bias parameter at this node. So this plus this into bias, very simple way. Similarly, this layer, this feature, multiply this plus this number of bias that give you the, the parameter. Is it clear, everybody? A dense layer? Yes, yes. I'm not writing. I hope it's clear to you guys. OK, let's go ahead, right? Now, third model is called uh, as a VG16, but before VG16, what is the problem in the Alexander architecture? The biggest drawback of the Alexander architecture is, right, there is no uniformity at the convolution layers right now. So they are using here different, different size of convolutions, like say for some time, if you look at that five cross five kernel size, three cross three, five, five, they like that, number one. So I, I make it, uh, like they for convolution layers and the, uh, this called the pooling layers, there is no uniformity right now. So 
in the, in the in the VC 16 what they have done they make it very I mean they they have done they have solved the problem of LaxNet by making a uh, that will be I mean some similarity at a dense layer they are using a specific processor and at the at the conversion layer they are using the specific the number of I mean the convergence filter and order also. So VG 16 is 16 stands for here having the 16 baited layer, which includes 13 convolutional layers and three fully connected layers, right? And this was introduced by the visual geometry groups of the Oxford Research University group, right? And this was, I, I, I would say in 2014, right? It was the one of the best architecture uh, for the uh, image recognition task on the image and data set, right? So what they did here, they made it like uh, convolutional layers. If we are using, they made it like uh, uh, they use the like uniform three cross thick filters. Use it here. So. This way, right? Now three cross the, uh, the filter uniform with this tied one. With this tied one always and using the same padding right now. So that is one thing. Uh, and the pulling layer, uh, they, they have used to cross to the filter and it's tied up to. So with this, they, they are able to make the architecture much, much superior as compared to the the Alexa architecture, right? So this having actually 138 million parameter actually. So this is architecture. You can see that there are uh, total are the 16, 13 convolution layers. So this input image, right? There are two convolution layers. Then red is here as a max pooling, and then convolution layers. Then max pooling, convolution layers, max pooling, convolution layers. Set of like three convolutions, max pooling, three convolutions, max pooling, three convolutions. Then here max pooling, and then they are using the work cross one convolution layers followed by the two, three. Fully uh, dense layer 4096, and then here again using one cross one conversion filter followed by the the soft max layer, right? So here again you can understand two part. We have here the feature structure part and the classification part. So if you go for more deeper, right? You can see that we have here the input image. with me and say rather. Is it clear, right? Guys, just confirm yes, that. Sir. Okay, so this yes, is input sir. image here you can say. So input image size is 224 cross 224 into 3, right? So we are using as a two convolution layers. You can see that here. And uh, here you can say using the padding here. So padding with they are getting the same size. Input dimension 224 into 223. So here the width and height is remain same. So we are using six uh, uh, kernel filter with the three cross three, the, the, that width, I mean the kernel size. So we are getting the feature map this. Likewise, here this layer, two conclusions, then max pulling. Finally, you get the max pulling sizes here, this right. Then next layer, you can see two set of conclusions. This will be given as input and then set of conclusion, then max pulling. The output of this max pulling given as input to next conclusion layers. So you'll get the size here 56 cross 56 into 256. 
So this layer has been used to 56 uh, filter and then uh, three convolution is used here. Set off here you can see um, and getting the same number of uh, that uh, here. This layer is using the same number of filters, right? 256 into 256, right? Now. Max pooling, then three convolution, max pooling. Then last here you can say three convolutions, then max pooling right now. Going to part two, part two is having the dense layer here. So after that, first task will be doing the flatting operation. And then after flatting, we'll get 25088. Then two dense layer you can use. I mean one dense layer, 4096. And 4096, uh, that will be involving the, you can use dropout. So dropout is basically that you use it uh, to prevent the overfitting problem in the uh, neural network and uh, this this layer basically here. And the next layer also you can see dense using 4096 followed by the dropout we are using here. And then the dimension will be remain same and the last as a dense layer which is called the softmax. So using 1000, uh, 1000 nodes which will be used for doing the image recognition task. So this is just example of uh, that uh, how uh, that uh, uh, dropout you, uh, you can understand. This is full network. This is you can say that a partial network and learning bits with the random like first two here. Uh, you can see the first two nodes here uh, that will be cross. Cross in the during the training phase, these two nodes become an inactive here, right? Likewise, next uh, third figure you see these two nodes are the uh, cross means that become zero. Now, I mean that will not be contributing any bits, right? That's called the dropout impact. Okay, so now coming to the implementation part. So as uh, as we have discussed uh, in the beginning, we can do uh, uh, here uh, classification. So classification task already we discussed how we can build a model for classification task. We can use uh, we need a four important parameter that is called here. Uh, uh, activation function, loss function, optimization algorithm and output layer configuration, right? So uh, activation inside the the scenario architecture always you need to use the uh, nonlinear activation, which will be normally preferred as a ReLU activation, which already been taught by Dr. Jenny Rajan. Loss functions using the binary cross entropy for any uh, any binary classification task. Optimization will be using we can use a stochastic gradient or Adam is basically these two are frequently used in the I mean out of Adam and this uh, SDD the Adam is more. Uh, I mean, the uh, you more frequently use Adam optimizer. Why it is Adam optimizer? I'll discuss later on. And then our output layer configuration that will be using the one node with the sigma activation functions or two node with the uh, softmax activation functions, right? So that uh, you can choose that. So these are the few applications, right? Which will be uh, for the object recognition task. I mean, classification. You can a cat dog uh, classification in remote sensing, cloudy and non cloudy image you can do, or fire and non fire image you can do, like the defect and non defective PCB also you can do using the uh, in a binary classification task. As a when implementing, keep in mind these are the things activation ReLU, which is nothing that max of 0 to into x, binary process entropy, this is a formula minus k goes to c, tk log of fsk minus sign and tk is ground tooth log of sk fsk nothing that that is the the output of predicted probability by the activation functions which is sigmoid will be like this one by one plus e k power minus sk so predicted value either will be belongs to class zero or either belongs to class one so how it is going to be class one class zero we will be after prediction of the probability we can apply the uh, thresholding operation if the predicted probability is less than 0.5, then 
that belongs to the class 0. And if the predicted probability is greater than 0.5, then the, that, uh, the predicted class belongs to the class 1, right? If this is required if you are using the sigma activation functions. But I mean, thresholding will be must use. If you are not using the sigma activation and if you are doing with the softmax with the two node, then the, the thresholding concept will not be used because if you are using softmax, then that giving the true probability, then you need to go for the argmax, right? To uh, find out which one is uh, uh, that uh, highest probability in the that row wise, right? I mean, values. And optimizer, you can freeze any one optimizer, SGD or uh, this Adam or R Adam also. And last layer, as I told you, we'll be using the sigma activation because our task is a binary classification task. There are other. This is a simple way you can also use depending on the data set, weighted cross entropy loss, balanced cross entropy. You can use. You can use pass loss or F1 score loss functions. You can use the card index loss, right? This is a simple coding if you want to do cross entropy, how it will be looks like right now. So you can use this law. This is simple. If you want to write the cross entropy from your scratch, you can def define def cross entropy y hat into y and then. Then you if y1 y equal to 1, then return to minus log y hat, uh, else it will return that minus log 1 minus y hat, in the sense that for class, the cross entropy belongs for class uh, class 1 and then class 0, you can compute that, right? You can also use other uh, loss functions for binary classification. You may use focal loss, you can use Tversky loss function, you can use softmax, Loss out max loss function. You can use uh, even the loss out max plus binary cross entropy. This was introduced by uh, my research team uh, as a combined loss joint loss functions. And other author also introduced the cross entropy plus dice loss for that work. Likewise, you can also go for active control loss as well. So these are the advanced loss functions you can explore if you are interested in doing research. This is just example of creating a model, ANN simple example. So if you want to create uh, any NN or CNN model, so you have three ways where you can create that. Sequential way of creating, functional way of creating model, and then third is a subclass way of creating model. I hope you have gone through that for other courses, right? I'm not going too much there. Then in a multi-class classification, so what happened? That uh, first and third will be freeze. So only that uh, loss functions, right? Uh, one more thing just here, I, I forget it. So here minus sign indicates that we want to minimize the loss value, right? And already proved that already, already I also have proved that uh, this loss, whether we are maximizing the cross entropy, many cross entropy, uh, and C is a class, so C will be two here, K1 to C. So you, when we are maximizing is that uh, that minimum point and maximum point is remains is whatever is there. Once we are minimizing the same cross entropy value, and then when we have been minimizing the maximum point and remain remain my point in the graph is remain safe. So always uh, in it is basically used uh, to minimize rather than the maximizer binary cross entropy, right? Because the maximum and minimum point is is same, and it is derived from the binomial distribution, right? So if you wanted to understand how it is drive and all the things. It is a one hour almost lectures required on this to make you understand mathematical way. So in this case for multi-class classifications, so first and third you can freeze, only that you can use the loss functions. Loss function you can use categorical cross entropy or we call as a soft max loss functions. Automatic algorithm I already told you freeze it, maybe a ZD, right? Output layer configuration you need to use uh, uh, softmax activation functions. So softmax activation functions that give you the probability for multiple classes. These are the applications already has been discussed. Come to the implementation as a first and third remain. You can freeze and then you the loss functions you can just. Uh, loss functions you can 
you can just uh, cross category cross entropy, which are nothing cross entropy formula here. C equal to minus I goes to C T I log F S I. F S I is nothing that this is the Y. This is basically that Y hat final Y hat printed output, right? So this is mathematically defined over here. You can say F S I equal to E S I divided by Sigma J go to C E S J and uh, uh, and this will be giving the probability for the number of classes. It will be nine classes, will be 10 classes, three classes, four class, depend on your data set, depend on your problem, what you are working, right? So again here, cross entropy we will be again minimizing that. And one thing just clear that this and the previous also binary cross entropy formula, what you have seen, this is for single sample. If you have M number of samples, then here one more, minus of one by M summation, one more summations will come I. So put it I for the M number of samples. Then you can use the even the better critical cross entropy loss functions. You can use other loss function remote sensing called the focal loss and uh, Tversky loss function, loss optimized. These are the loss functions which are used for the binary classification as well as for the uh, multi-class classifications, right? Coming to the open source data set, so we will be going to demonstrate uh, on the uh, data set called the uh, Euroset that is called land use land cover classification with the Sentinel sensor. This is one of the data set is available uh, freely. This is a source you can download it. The data already given over here. This data set basically having 10 classes and with a total of 27,000 label and geo reference images are there with the 13 bands because uh, this the Sentinel data Euroset having uh, is a, a Sentinel-2 satellite which are having basically 13 bands and uh, the researcher, the, the original author, right? He already uh, that uh, proved that he already demonstrated that the accuracy on this data set is 98.57 percent, right? So this bottom are the two references of the contributor. So which was they have uh, introduced. I mean, they they have work on this data set, Euroset data set in uh, 19 and 18. 18, they presented conference symposium and then uh, 19, they were, their work was published in the IEEE JSTAR journal, right? This is other data set which could be used for uh, doing classification tasks, cloud, shadow, land cover in a, from the in planet scope and the Sentinel-2 imagery data. So both the data set are available which can, can you can also do classification tasks. Link is given. You can visit and you can explore more about the data set. I'll be moving ahead, not talking much on this. This is important, which I wanted to tell some optimization because there was a request from the author. So coming to the gradient descent algorithm, optimization algorithm, there are three basically. So batch gradient descent algorithm, stochastic gradient descent algorithm, mini batch gradient descent algorithm. These three are the basics, and then there are other gradient descent optimization algorithms. So here, this is the like bit equation, right? That perceptron rule, which already you might be knowing yesterday, right now. But David was day, Dr. Jini Rajan has told. So WT1 equal to WT minus Nita, del loss Y hat comma Y divided by del W. Similarly, for the bit bias also you can write B T plus one equal to B minus Nita, del loss into del bias here, right? You can also write it. So. How, how we are going to implement any optimization algorithm to update the, uh, the bit and bias parameter, right? So let us discuss one by one. I am not taking much time because uh, if you go for very deeply, uh, it's again that will be around a two hour session to make you deeply with more mathematics uh, that uh, gradient incident optimization algorithms. I'll just explain you the concept with a pseudo code which give you the idea how it is going to be, is implemented in the back end, right? So let's, we have X a data input, Y is a label, the ground tooth, and we need to do some initialization parameter, which you can, you can see here, right? This marker, can you see that? Uh, now it's working. Oh no, it was not. Okay, so this is like, uh, as I called first, uh, um, batch grid and algorithm. So here you can see that we have to do these things are input. These are some inner size and parameter, right? And then to implement a batch gradient descent algorithm, which is simplest one, 
we need one for loop. This is outer for loop, one for loop. For I in the range of zero to number of iterations, right? Then in any implementation from the scratch, there are total four steps you need to do, right? Four step means you need to write the separate, the code, Python code from the scratch, right? Uh, like four step you have to do. First, in a forward propagation, right? Second, forward propagation means what we'll do? We'll computing y hat, right? Y hat. So y hat, how we write? You can write the, this separate formula, Python code you have to write, which will be depend on x and parameter. Then compute cost, the value of loss, right? Cost equal to cost underscore, uh, that will be compute cost, y hat into y. For that, you can compute here the bandy cross entropy for bandy classification task, right? Or critical cross this. Uh, Category cross entropy loss you can compute for the multi class, right? Then backward propagation you have to write the formula for back. I mean, the gradients. Gradient means what? This is a gradient part right here, this part. Del loss by y hat into y, del w. This you have to compute that gradient you have to compute uh, with the help of y hat into parameter. And the last uh, 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 that uh, parameter is update parameter. So update parameter here is parameters equal to. Update parameter where you can write the code for updating the uh, bit and bias, right? And they depend on the parameter and the gradient here, right? Is that clear, everybody? Yes, sir. This part is clear, right? How this batch created an algorithm will be going to be implemented, right? So, what happened here if we have 100 samples, for example, right? 100 training samples, all 100 training samples we need to give one at a time, right? So all the operations, four, four operations will be happening, right? In the first iteration for 100 samples, okay? Once a first iteration completed, then go to second operation. It will be repeating and you can analyze that how many iteration you want to run for your model, right? 30, 40 or say for 100, 100 iterations. Is that clear everybody? This is simplest called batch gradient, uh, batch gradient descent algorithms. Okay. Second is called stochastic gradient descent algorithm. So uh, there we were doing that basically in uh, previous was using the I mean all the all the you uh, that the samples will be given as a one go. That means there we are using the called vectorized complement uh, implementation for implementing. Uh, once come to the uh, this uh, call stochastic gradient descent algorithms, uh, first three I mean as the same x input data y level parameter equal to slash parameter. Then we need two for loop, two for loop to implement that right. This is first for loop i that here for i in the range this this outer loop number of iteration. Second is J in the range of 0 to M, where M is the number of samples in the training samples input, right? So what we'll do here? Uh, here, instead of giving all the samples, right? We will be passing through one sample at a time, right? So starting from the zero samples, and then all four operations will happen. Then the second samples, all the four samples will have, all the four operations will happen. Then third samples like that hundredth sample that will be doing all the operations, right? So idea is here that the here computations will be, I mean, it's very easy because all the things will happen only one samples, right? So, but uh, the major problem is that computation become easy, but that that uh, time is step stay because there is a frequently updates, right? You will find there is a code and that will be noisy steps looks like that once you plot the curve right now. So this is what the stochastic gradient descent. Very simple way, if you want to implement, you need to do for loop and all the operations will happen here, uh, like forward path, compute cost, backward propagation, update parameters, all the things will happen for individual, each individual samples. So you can understand the, uh, the, the, the j, j loop, second loop inside the loop, or this is a, is is operating right 
I funded samples 100 times. In one epoch, that uh, second loop will iterate into 100 times. Then once completed, then the second iteration will start. Then again, the inside loop will be operating 100 times to doing all the computations operations right now. Is it clear? Participant, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, so the uh, because it's basically frequent update is happening, all the parameters become the noise. I mean, the all the time taken become very noisy curve will come that right now. So and also takes last time more here, right? But computation is fast here, right? Because it don't take much time for computing the the individual other uh, steps here. What is happening? So next is the call mini batch strip causing gradient set algorithm. So this algorithm to implement require the uh, that will be uh, two for loop, but instead of giving the single samples, the single training samples, here we can give the batch of samples. Suppose, uh, and here let me explain you. So outer loop is same, for loop that will remain same. The second loop, which is the J, in the range of 0 to M into batch size. What is M? M is a number of samples. Batch size is basically what we are initializing. So here M is a number of samples. So by side B can select as a user or the coder can decide, right? Depend on the, their computational power, right? Hardware, all the things. So by side, suppose we have 100 training samples. 100 training sample, let's we want to pass 10 sample at a time, right? So we can make the 10 into 10, 100, right? So uh, that will be 10 sample at a time, right? So the, the all the four operations here, will be happening for the 10, 10 samples. So what happened that, that now the, the, the jth loop, which will be iterating into 10 times for the same examples, rather than uh, previous was it is iterating into 100 times, right? So this is advantage, right? All base in, in the deep learning also, we will be giving that batch size. So batch size is very, very important, right? Because otherwise it takes more time to, to get the Final output or training time will also more take more time. So batch size is again practically whenever you go for the any deep learning work, batch size always will be chosen as to the power of n, n value from one to and uh, one to some values, right? Now large value. So depend on the data set, depend on all the computation power, batch size two. If you take batch size one, it's is it's become very really stochastic gradient algorithm, right? Now, and if it become uh, two. Then it is a mini batch, 2, 2, 4, then 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, like that. You can select that, right? So that will be happening. Is that clear this part? All three basics are clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. There are other uh, optimizer algorithms, right, which we call in deep learning, which we use, uh, that is adaptive gradient uh, descent algorithms. And RMS prof, ADA delta, ADAM, right? So, what was the previous? All three was happening, right? The 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 parameter here. This this is a learning rate nita. So all the previous three algorithm, their focus was the uh, a constant learning rate. And sometimes, if a constant learning rate you are using, right? That that the parameter, right? That the learning rate that that will not be a uh, sometime will not be good actually right now. Your learning will not be good and uh, the performance may not be, be, be will be better also. So idea is that the, there are different author in instead of using that fixed learning rate. So for each iterations or each step, if we are able to change the learning rate, then the performance of the algorithms will be better than. So that is only key idea of using the some advanced uh, gradient decision optimizer algorithm, right? So whether RMS prop and then ADA grade or ADA delta Adam, again, this takes a lot of time to explain you. Just I'll give you very brief. So there are like different algorithm other than three. Momentum, which was introduced in 1999. Then Nestro accelerated gradient descent, which was uh, 1983. Then this was ADA grade. This was used in deep learning also. 21, uh, Ducci has tall in 2011 introduced, then ADA Delta introduced in 12, RMS prop uh, that will be 
Palemon uh, and a hint in 2012, Adam, which is uh, introduced in 2015 by uh, Kingma and Ba, uh, which we call adaptive moment estimation right now. And there are various Adam extension also there, right? Adam X, uh, then uh, an Adam, N Adam, then AMS, Grad, right? Uh, Ada bound, uh, and then RA Adam. This one 90, right? now. So normally researchers uses R. You can use actually Adam. You can use. You can also use RMS prop. Is also quite good right now as compared to that Ada grades. And you can use Adam or you can also use RA Adam also, which was the introduced in 2019. Right. Again, takes a lot of time to make you understand, but I'll give you the just for concept. So the idea was, as I told you, that all the other algorithm is to to the focus on the learning rate, right? So learning rate should not be a large. So learning rate should be all always the deep learning. We will be keeping as a learning rate. Nita is as small as possible. Ideally, the value is between zero to one, but practically we will taking that value as small as possible, right? So this is what the illustration of uh, learning rate this year. This curve, you can say this is called uh, curve called uh, that uh, convex curve convex plot here, right? The, uh, the curve. So in convex algorithms, right, you can see uh, this having the big learning rate, like here to here and then here to here going. So it's learning rate is here is more, right? Instead of that, what we'll do, we can go like this, be like this. If you want to reach here, so you can do a smaller, smaller step. So the learning rate will be a smaller than that. That is a key idea. And I'll explain you in in a, in a, that, uh, the pseudo code, which we have written that. So Basically, we need to do various parameter called initialization, beta and bias, and then the gradient of the that uh, uh, this uh, uh, m and uh, gradient, and then all the parameters beta one, beta two, we need to initialize right right now, and then x input label and number of samples we need to initialize right now. So then, then again, if you look at that, this is just initialization parameter, right? Please. Then the forward propagation again we are doing. Y hat. This is just explaining for NN point of view so that you can understand. Then Y hat compute, which is sigmoid. Sigmoid, if you are using for binary classification, otherwise you can use softmax activation for the multi class. And this return the Y hat. This is a forward propagation. Then cost computing. Cost computing, you can use the uh, that is called binary cross entropy. That is minus one by M sum of Y into log Y hat plus. Uh, one minus y log one minus y hat. This is for m samples, and you can go for the categorical cross entropy for the uh, uh, for the m samples for the multi class classification. So minus one by m sum of y into log y hat. Right. This give you the categorical cross entropy in the return cost. Then backward propagation. So derivative of a is basically the activations. Right. Y hat minus uh, y hat. This is obviously. Final, we are getting the uh, derivative, final output of the activation functions. Dz, dA into derivative of sigma, which is nothing that dA into of this value into y hat into 1 minus y hat, right? now. And then uh, you can use also for derivative of sigma, sigma softmax if you're using multi class, then, then uh, gradient of dW, d, uh, ddb computed, and then returning the dW. And this is nothing that the gradient with respect to the bit and the bias need to compute it and then we need to do for bit updation. So bit updation before that we need to calculate the moving average, which is called here MW, right? Will be calculated as follows here. And then for a moving average for with respect to the bit, moving average with respect to the uh, the bias and then the uh, that uh, what do you call this variance, right? V uh, with respect to bit and bias and then we have to do bias corrections. Bias correction, this is a formula over here. Need to compute bias corrections for the with respect to bit and bias, and then that variance also both we need to do that. And after that, doing the update parameter, right? W equal to W minus neta, M DW corrected into square root of V DW corrected plus AEP epsilon. And then uh, for similarly for the bias case, this will return the bit and bias. And this will also that moving uh, that average that gradient, right? V gradient, M gradient, all the things will be returning that. And finally, uh, this will be that overall. So this is a 
code which is similar to the previous right now. So here also we'll be doing the batch size, right? Two for loop needed, right? Forward propagation, com computing cost, back propagation, and update param. This is the step is finally the end of the process. This is the here exactly same. So we need to do a lot of things. The idea is we wanted to change the learning rate uh, so that the, the algorithm get converts. Only one task, the, the algorithm we wanted to converge uh, so that the performance of the, the algorithm results should be stable. Once the algorithm is stable, deep learning, when the algorithm is converges after certain epoch, then you can see if you run multiple times, your algorithm should give the same result and converging that right after say for 30, 40 epochs. If it is converging, then your model is good. Otherwise, what happens? You will every time you test, you will getting the different results. Why it is happening? Because your model is not good. Your model is not converging, right? Converging means graph. If you see that will be after some epoch that should get stable your the training loss and accuracy values, right? Is it clear? Everybody? I hope it may not give you crystal clear. I, I mean understanding because uh, and one more thing, so Adam optimizer is a combination of basically that the momentum and the RMS prop, right? So RMS prof, if it go and this all the talking, then only will end up with this. Already time is going ahead. So what are the advantages? Advantage very straightforward can be implemented, computationally efficient. It take little memory requirement as compared to the other, and invariance to diagonal scale of the gradient and well suited to the problem uh, that are uh, large in terms of the data and parameters. Appropriate also problem with the very noisy or sparse gradient cases. And then hyperparameters have intuitive interpretations, simple, and that require very little tuning compared to the other uh, other grade initial algorithms. So this part is as a data augmentation. So data augmentation again will be very very important. So for make it the generalizations and getting the better result. So in in, in that different framework like deep learning, uh, CREAS framework, and then. And the TensorFlow framework, they are called the data generator. So in Keras, this is called image data generator. Image generator is a very powerful tool, which, which will help us doing the data augmentation while training time itself. Also, we can do data augmentation even the separately whenever we have less samples to increase the number of samples, right? More detail, you can just visit here. You will understand how it works. Uh, that will be there. In the TensorFlow, TensorFlow, the, that uh, data augmentation is, is 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 much much better than this. But of course, that will be have some pros and cons. That is much faster than the uh, that will be image data generator. So in the TensorFlow deep learning library, we have two way of doing the data augmentation. Either we can do sequential class uh, using the and pre-processing module, which is the first part exactly same as the <coughs> same as for the and that across image generator, which you can see here. And then, or you can use the TF dot image module for the doing data augmentation. This gives a full control, but this is more tedious to understand and then work uh, for, uh, compared to the image uh, data generator, right? So as I told you, TF dot data is, is, a, is a four time around the more, more than four times faster than the image data generator for loading and processing the data. So I don't know. This data set I have already talked. So this data set is having the 10 classes. So what are the 10 classes? That is called industrial, residential, annual crop, permanent crop, and uh, we have the river, sea and lake, and then uh, herbaceous, vegetation, highway, pasture, forest. These are the 10 classes of the images which are there in the data set. And this data set, as I told you, introduced by the this year, the researchers right now. And if you want to go for, so there are five way of various way of implementing, let's say VGG16 model, creating model using the deep learning, importing TensorFlow API without pretend bits and fine tune the top layer, importing from the TensorFlow API without pretend bits and the fine tune top layers, importing from the TensorFlow API with uh, pretend bits. Just transfer learning approach or importing from the transfer uh, TensorFlow API with the pretend bits, then fine tune the top layer that is called again transfer learning approach, right? 
So this is the 16 model. VG16, I'll give you concept, right? So this is our input image right now. So from conversion layer one to conversion layer five, which is start from 64, 128, 256, 512, and 512, these layers we call as a base layer, right? And then we have here called the top fully connected layer. So we call it a top layers. So base layer, if you are using going for transfer learning, so base layer we can we can retain as such. Only we can just uh, train or fine tune only the top layers, right? For the image, this is example for the uh, that image in data set. Later on can be modified for the uh, Euro, Euroset data set, right? So in Euroset data set, right? We can work on the RGB Euroset data set. Once we work on the RGB Euroset data set, then it is exactly similar to the model which was uh, used for the ImageNet data set, right? So I hope this is a top layer, base layer, and top layer. So when we use a, a word called base layer, you should have proper understanding. When I say top layer, top layer means we are looking for the fully connected layers, how we are going to <coughs> update and modify that, right? So uh, two things, as I told you already, we can do learning from scratch or we can do uh, transfer learning. I'll just take the, this part I'll not uh, explain here. Uh, let's go, uh, one thing here. Uh, and if you wanted to work on multispectral data, so what are the modification needed? We have input images which are 13 bands right now. So we need one convolution filter, which is called zero. Up to here was the base layer. So one more convolution layer we can use, which is here black bound says, with the three number of filters so that the, the feature map of this convolution layer will be exactly same as the, what is the required for the input during the, uh, as a as a for uh, this classes, right? Now for the image net here. So the input feature map here is exactly same as the that will be become for the image and data set, right? So this is one modification needed here as a zero column with three filter because here the number of bands are 13, right? So we will be getting only three bands after this conversion operation. The rest will be remain same. Output layer you need to modify. You, you need to use 10 classes, right? So this is just already given the experimental results on RGB Euroset data set. So you can say BG16 training top layer just 94.2. That will be that accuracy with this epoch, 19 epoch. Fine tune you can get 97.7 with the 206 uh, epoch. And from the scratch you could trade, you will get 97.2. So there is no need to scratch from the from the I mean the scratch, especially in the some classification task in a remote sensing field right now. Whereas dense net, if you see. His result is not much powerful here if you see that here. So there is no point of very uh, dense layer also right now. And for multispectral user data set, V16 giving 96.1 and this is 75 training only top layers. And here fine tune 98 point this, here 89 this. Fine tune alternate, this architecture leave it part. So once you do a scratch, you can do 97.6 here right now. This is 96, 98.0. So, there's a very small difference in between. Okay, so let me just quickly uh, uh, take you the cloud. I mean this. Okay, so don't know, right? Okay, leave it. These are the basic step, right? Importing library, all the things. Reset data set. I just wanted to demonstrate like image and data set right now. So we have here the data set path, trained validation and test. And then batch size is 64, image height, this part. And the data augmentation, what we'll do? Data generator, image generator. So we are writing here the rescaling, just normalizing the their values, industry value. And then doing the, some feature wise centered, or gender free false. And then we are doing the that uh, normalization, feature standard device normalization also we are doing as a part of data augmentation. Then training generator data flow dot data gen previous whatever we have passed here. Then dot flow from the directory validation path target size image height and width. Then batch size shuffle yes class mod categorical because it's our going to be multi class classification. Ten classes are there, right? And then if you wanted you can print. If you will print that you'll get that how many data set are there, 
right? You get the classes and labels also. All the 10 labels are there. And one thing just wanted if you training right now, train generator. So train generator, because we don't have the ground tooth, right? All the data are flow, uh, that uh, just put kept in the directory is in the in the in the like separate folder, right? So if you print the train dot generator as a two samples, this is the data value already giving and also generating the after that ground tooth. So this year, the up to here was the I mean the the data values, which is a normalized right now. Values are they normalized and then also giving the ground tooth labels right now of the classes 10 classes. So it's basically one hot binary coded. So having 0, 0, 0, 0001, so here one. So one belongs to say for 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, right? So this will be for the 0th class, 1 class, 2 class, 3 class, 4th class, right now. And then here like this one, and here if you see one, so that a specific class representing, right? I hope you have some idea. And this is a model which we created from this deep learning, right? API, you can create it right. I'm not time is not there. So you see that the bits are right here computed. So the concept which I told you, you can verify that how the bits are com parameters are computed with the each conclusion layers right now. This will have it like fit the generator training part will happen. Once we train it, we'll see the performance is not good right here. Loss is 1.196 here. You see that there's an overfitting happening here. Validation loss is uh, that is more than the training loss right now. So there is an overfitting happening here, right? If you do from the scratch, and sometimes if we if you do import from the API and with the pre image pre net bits, so here we'll be importing that bits equal to image pre net top layer false and this part. So we'll see that here, right? See that. The, the loss is a training accuracy is 0.86 and the validation accuracy is 0.83. So there is no overfitting happening because you can go for the, I mean, just we are also fine tuning the top layers right now. So API with a, I mean, transfer learning approach for the sum application is very good. Need not to train from the scratch. You can just fine tune the top layers only, right? So this is a curve like you can plot the training loss, validation loss. Yeah. 